Hello, and thank you for joining me today for our presentation on Effective Instructional Outcomes. There are four key elements of an instructional outcome. First, the wording must be clear and free of jargon. Students must be able to understand what is expected of them. Second, the outcome should be rigorous, which means that it should be precise, thorough, and proven in the classroom through formative and summative assessments. It should connect prior learning to new learning and relate to important concepts and skills students will need in and out of school. Usually when they are clear and rigorous, they can be viably assessed, but that is not a given. Only analysis of the assessment data, student performance, and feedback from the students can verify that an outcome is appropriate. Perhaps most important, the outcome should be appropriate to the student's needs. Throughout the development of an outcome, one should question oneself about the student's cognitive ability, their cultural reality, and their prior experiences to ensure that they will successfully achieve the objective of the outcome. There are three types of learning that teachers should consider when writing instructional outcomes. The first is knowledge and understanding, which can be assessed through selected response instruments. The second is skills-based learning, which can be assessed through performance-based assessments. The third is the most difficult to assess, dispositions. Dispositions are, are in the effective domain and include attitudes, values, and habits of mind, for example. Teachers can observe dispositions over time and assess using observations, journals, portfolios, and other longer-term assessments. One excellent way to craft an outcome is to use the ABCD method. A for audience refers to the students. You should know your students well and craft an outcome that meets their needs. B is for behavior. You should ask yourself, what do you want the students to be able to do? C for condition requires you to explain the circumstances or context in which you want them to learn something. D is for degree, the degree of mastery you expect at this point in time for this outcome. Another way to write an outcome is to write a SMART outcome. SMART outcomes are specific. They answer the five W questions, who, what, when, where, why. They're measurable, so they establish criteria for progress. They are attainable. They provide a chance for success. They're realistic. They're within the zone of proximal development. And they are timely. They set a deadline, such as by the end of the lesson, or by the end of the unit, by the end of the year. Here's my example of an outcome for knowledge and understanding. Students will list five parts of speech and their definitions from memory and provide examples of how they are used in a sentence without assistance from the teacher and with at least 80% accuracy. This is definitely a specific outcome. It's measurable. It asks for at least 80% accuracy on an assessment. It's attainable, as long as it's within the student's zone of proximal development. It's realistic. If we have taught the parts of speech, they should be able to provide examples of how they're used and they should be able to provide their definitions. And it's timely in that we can assume that it would be assessed at the end of a lesson or a unit. Here's an example of a skills-based outcome. Given topics provided by the teacher, a writing rubric, and a handout describing the techniques reviewed in class. Students will write a persuasive essay in the five paragraph format with at least 80% accuracy in terms of focus, topic, purpose, and audience, content, organization, grammar, and style, tone and voice. That's a lot. But it is in accordance with the SMART goal uh, philosophy and it can be differentiated for, say, an English language learner and, or a gifted student or a special needs student. All we would need to do is either insert some scaffolding or remove some scaffolding from this outcome and then we can, um, we can make it specific to a particular learner. 
Here's an outcome related to disposition and attitude. And I'm going to let you decide for yourself if you think that this, uh, this outcome meets the criteria for an effect, effective outcome. I think it does, and you may disagree. Students will demonstrate an increasing appreciation for effective communication skills through their responses to an ungraded survey about effective communication before the unit and after the unit. Since all learning outcomes should be aligned to the standards prescribed by the state, I would like to share with you my method for aligning my learning outcomes to the PA Core standards. First, I consult the PA Core curriculum framework. I select a subject area and a grade level. I review the long-term transfer goals. I choose a big idea. I align the big idea to one or more long-term transfer goals. I review its essential questions, concepts, and competencies. Then I examine my learning outcomes, and for each one, I ask myself, which long-term transfer goal does this address? What is the big idea that this outcome addresses? Does the outcome help students respond to the essential questions? Does this outcome address the needs of my current students? How could I modify this outcome to allow for differentiated and culturally responsive instruction? Will the outcome help me to viably assess my students' competence? Which standard do best relates to the outcome? And is this outcome important? I want to thank you again for joining me for this discussion of effective instructional outcomes. I hope you have enjoyed the presentation and that it will generate some lively discussion.